name is Kevin Lose. I'm co-founder and COO of Crowd Comfort. Over here is Abdullah Dowd, our co-founder and CTO. Crowd Comfort, what we do, we leverage crowdsource occupant feedback to improve building operations. So what does this mean? Uh, I'd like to kind of demonstrate what that means by going through some challenges all of you can relate to uh, in a typical day. So you get to the office and the parking lot is covered with ice. You might go to the office throughout your day, all of a sudden you have a paper jam in the printer for the 40th time over the past month. Finally, you go to use a conference room for an important client and the light is out and not operating. So what are your options here? What most of us do is nothing. We just let it be, assume someone else will take care of it and move on with our lives uh, as a slight nuisance. Option two is to try and tell somebody uh, that could be through an email that you're not sure where that is, or a number, you're not sure what number that is. Uh, or you can broadcast it uh, through social media, through Twitter, Facebook, anything like that. And really what you're doing is broadcasting information, you're just sending it off, you're not sure who's listening, you're not sure, there's no feedback, um, which is frustrating for both you, the people, but also the organizations. Uh, it's really information chaos. You have no control over the messaging, it can hurt your reputation, it can hurt your operations. Crowd Comfort flips this funnel, takes real-time geolocated information in and around buildings and communicates that to the people who can actually act on it. All the while there's this feedback loop so you're automatically notified as your issue is being addressed. How's it work? You simply sign up for our cloud-based service, select the information that you're interested in collecting as an organization, and you're up and running in a matter of hours. I'm gonna jump straight to the demo because I feel that's the best way to show this. So let's take that first example. Can you all hear me all right? Yeah. Great, you take the first example, you get to work, there's an icy patch. You simply open up the app, you identify where you are. I have a master account so I see all our locations, but if you're on site it uses the phone's native GPS to know where you are. Office one, report a maintenance issue. I say ice, I choose a photo, I see parking lot, I submit, and then I'm showing a history of that particular location. So I see what other people have been reporting there. <coughs> what happens next, my colleague here, he just has the management app. You get a real-time push notification as a manager, the person who's responsible for that space. And from there, you can actually manage it in a matter of seconds. You can see who reported it, where they were. From here, you can change the status to in progress. You can assign it to somebody with an email and a note, or you can add a comment. As you're doing these things, the person who originally reported that is automatically notified that their issue is being addressed. I could do the same thing with the other issues, the lights out, the printer is broken. The difference in each of those cases is when you report that the printer is broken, that message goes directly to the IT person, whereas when the facility issue is reported, it goes directly to the facilities person. So as you can probably tell, this is a really useful potentially powerful facility solution for real estate owners and operators. And this has helped us get clients like GE, MassArt, and some other companies. But what's really exciting for us is the vision because what we're doing here is really dynamic geo-messaging. And what I mean by that is we're taking a certain space, we know who you are, you're a public user, we know where you are, for example, I'm at Mass Challenge, and Mass Challenge has already told us what they're interested in collecting. These are the problems they have in the kitchen. So I can easily at a touch of a button report that the coffee machine is broken, there's a dishwasher problem, or things like that. And if you can open your mind a little bit and think of some other use cases, one example, the city of Boston came to us and said, we see this technology, we have a problem with snow removal reporting. So we built the app, we, we already had the app built, it's the same app, we just upload the information. If I'm a snowplow contractor, it knows who I am, it knows where I am, and it automatically brings up the appropriate reporting module for that space. I remove the snow, here's the picture, it's validated. And so really we see, we see this adding a ton of value to a whole spectrum of organizations out there. And um, that's about it. And finally, I would like to say we are hiring right now. Uh, we are looking for a full-time web developer as well as a full-time UX person. So uh, please find me afterwards and hopefully we can chat. Thanks a lot. Yes. So you mentioned um, this is going to be used for offices and such, but what about um, you know, apartments and apartments? 
Yeah, absolutely. We actually deployed at uh, about a 300 unit multifamily um, up north of Boston here. And they're testing that exact use case out. So if you're a tenant, you can simply open the app, report that you have a lighting issue or a plumbing issue, and it gets submitted in real time to the person who's managing that space. Yes? Uh, is it only iOS or is it Android, web page, send emails, et cetera? We, had a, we have a native iOS application, so it's optimized for iOS devices, iPhones and iPads. However, we also have a web app, uh, so we are device agnostic. It works on all Android devices as well as desktops. Yes? The MBTA was our second pilot site, and actually they are using it. Uh, th they want to test it on the management side first, so they have our uh, technology set up for their inspections on fuel tanks. So it knows where they are. Uh, we have the capability to work offline. So if they're in a tunnel, they can go through the inspections, report up their issues, things like that. Uh, there's the potential for that to deploy in trains and stations in the next two years. How do you decide what to charge a client? So uh, right now we're charging per unique location that they want to use. So we're deployed at GE, their first paying customer. Uh, in Bill Ricca. They have a 250,000 square foot building. They have 400 different locations. So for example, a conference room, an office, a kitchen, and it's $2 per location per month. So they're paying about $10,000 a year. Yes. You mentioned uh, City of Boston. City of Boston has something similar called City Connect. Two questions, were you part of that development or in second, are you upgrading the City of Boston from City Connect to your platform? Uh, yes, good question. So we are familiar with Citizens Connect, and really we feel our space is generally in indoor locations, but we've seen organizations like the City of Boston and the MBTA say this is actually useful for some of our outdoor locations, so that we use the GPS to know those inspectors are actually on site and doing their job. Uh, the question was, the City of Boston has an app called Citizen Connect, and it's essentially a pothole spotter, so if you see something wrong, you can report it with this pothole or graffiti and the city takes care of it. So we were, the original idea for us was to take that concept indoors and you know, our platform allows you to geolocate within a building. Can you give a little bit about your company, uh, number of employees, funding status, that type of stuff? Yes, we have seven full-time employees. Uh, we've raised about $650,000 to date uh, from a group of wow. angels in the area and we're closing on another round of capital in February. Hey, David. You know, I really like the idea. I like David for long um, So, what kind of technology challenges do you have? Ideas. <laughs> I don't know where to. I don't know where to start. There's obviously a, a lot of challenges. Um, you know, really, right now, the geolocation indoors is challenging for us. And I think in the future, we see ourselves leveraging a bunch of different technologies out there, whether it's eye beacons, RFID, Bluetooth. Right now, we've been going old school. Uh, we actually, you know, you can drop down menu, pick where you are, but you can also use G QR codes. You can put them up around a building, and each QR code is tied to a specific location. Um, that's just one of our many challenges. Can I have one? Yeah. Uh, so it's an excellent question. One of the primary challenges, I would say, is not actually technology. Is every time we go to a customer, they actually want to use it in a different way. We built it highly configurable, but as you can imagine, uh, I got a use case today about a medical company who wanted to use us to to profile their patients about whether they're eligible for certain treatment or not, just because they already know where they are and they can just use our auto value and figure out issues from there, so. I think we have time for one more question. Yes. This seems interesting. In the city of Boston, I know the plows all have transponders on them. Yep. So do you just give your information to a dispatcher? Uh, or do you follow up to see if someone is actually... So each contractor uses his, own, his or her own smartphone and downloads their app. So the transponders track where they are and if they've been idle for a while or not. But really through the app, they can report that, yes, I affirmatively clear this. Here's a picture to prove it. They submit it. The city of Boston knows. So when the city comes and asks, you know, what percentage of the city has been plowed, they can say, we know 65% has been plowed and this is their velocity. Thank you. Great, thank you very much.